Alright, so hopefully you guys saw all that introductory stuff that was at the start of this. I saved the video for it, however, uh, I had an issue, as I mentioned in that part, with uh, the GameCube disc not being red. So, to quickly sum up, in case you did not watch that first part with all the cutscenes and what have you, uh, the first thought that I had got uh, messed up because I got a couple chapters in recording and found out all the files corrupted and so I actually had to replay the game to this point. Thankfully the level ups were almost identical whenever I actually got levels and I tried to keep it as close as I possibly could and really the only chapter it's going to affect is this one because after this we'll get the convoy where we can award, uh, award bonus experience. So once we do that everybody's going to be at about the same level because that's about where I'm going to put them. So it's like I said it's really only going to affect this level it's not going to be too bad for anything else. Uh, aside from that, uh, I don't think there was anything else too terribly important. If it was, it was mentioned in that part. Um, yeah, I think that's it. We'll go over the rest of what's important about this map when we actually get started. So, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the items real quick. Uh, I had all these sorted too before I saved, so this is Ike's inventory. He's got one room for a sword, one for an item. I gave Rees the axes. Everything's about similar here. I'm just going ahead. Uh, going and show it to you. The fire spell will be available in this stage, so make sure the sword's got an empty slot for it. As you can see, his wind spell is just about gone, like it was in the actual playthrough. Uh, Oscar's about full in inventory, so I'm going to try to make sure he doesn't get too much stuff. Tanya's full in weapons, she's got a few other slots. And Boyd's got one slot for weapons and one for items. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and... Well, there is no view... Oh, no, there is a view map, but for some reason I read that as something else. So you can take a look at the stage real quick, as you can see there's kind of enemies just kind of scattered about here, I mean they're kind of just all over the place. Uh, so what we're going to do here is repositioning, actually no, everybody's good where they are. Uh, I don't think we need anything else. So you can look at the conditions, victory is routing the enemy, defeats if I dies. Uh, looks like that's all I was going to go over. So hopefully everything sorted itself out, hopefully future me fixed the uh, issue that was going on. So I do apologize for that, the fact that I'm having to use a new file. I am sorry, but at the same time, it's not my fault. It's not like anybody wants to see the whole, yeah, this the disc isn't being read, go eject it and try again. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to move Ike north. If you take a look at these guys, they're both going to have ranged weapons, and both of them will move. This guy has a chest key to open this chest, and there's also two more over here, and this guy's got a chest key as well. So you'll be able to pick those up. So go ahead and move Ike north. Uh, you definitely do want to move him north because there's a character that's going to be recruited at the start of that character's turn uh, after I finish mine here. So I'll just equip the Iron Sword because they're not going to use a close range attack. They're just going to use range with their ranged weapons. And everybody else I'm going to move forward. Sorry, I hit that button a little fast. I believe it said, yeah, 11 times 2. Very nice. So as you can see on this file, Soren is a little bit higher level than he was, and Oscar is a little bit lower level than he was. It's probably better that I did it like that, though. And the reason for the fact that Soren got more levels is he got adept a lot more when I was using him in the levels he was available for. And I believe he actually got a few criticals as well. Ooh, that was a pretty good level too, right there. Thankfully, though, Oscar's, like, you know, a lot more reliable, just in the sense of... I'm gonna throw away the javelin. A lot more reliable in the sense of the fact he can be on the front lines. He's got a pretty solid defense starting out, so it, it is probably better that he's a little bit lower in exchange for Soren, because I would like to have Soren at this point be getting close to getting kills against whoever he attacks, or getting close. So here's our other unit, as you can see by the green ring. And we'll be seeing her whenever her turn actually starts. The enemy's going to get to go first here. Now, I don't think we've seen another other unit. We saw Boyd, but he wasn't actually like doing anything on the map. He just turned to green after you beat him in the prologue chapter. Other units kind of act as their own volition. They won't attack you. Uh, sometimes you can interact with them, and sometimes you cannot. 
it, it kind of just depends on the unit itself. But generally speaking, if you see another unit, you'll probably want to try to talk to them with somebody, typically Ike. Uh, obviously, I'll be letting you know who it is. In this case, Mia will actually come and talk to Ike herself, but quite often you'll actually have to engage the other unit. In this case, you will not, though. Whenever her turn starts, she's actually going to run to you. And then she'll interact with you. Your name it wouldn't have to be Ike, would it? It is, but who are you? I'm Mia. I'm a mercenary hired by crowning to bolster the army's numbers. Ah, an army mercenary, huh? So, uh, what are you doing here? I got careless and was captured. They're about to send me to a prison camp and Grail saved me. You see my father? Where? Just a little bit north of here. Not too far away, though. Really? So he's safe. Tell me, who exactly are you guys? We're the Grail mercenaries. As you can see, we're fighting against Dan. Huh, you're taking on a whole damn battalion with these numbers? Nice. That settles it, then. Settles what? The battle. I'm coming in on your side. You don't mind, do you? I'm fine with it. Uh, it's fine with me, but I don't know if you're gonna get paid just because I let you fight. We'll worry about the details later. Great, so that's all taken care of. What's next, boss man? There you go, just like that, Mia has joined our group here. No, not that. So if you want to take a look at her stats very quickly, I don't actually have the stats pulled up, but I do know them because I had a failed recording of this, thankfully. Mia is a Myrmidon. We've seen a couple of these guys before. I don't think there's any on this map in particular, but we've seen them before. Fighters who live and die by the skill of the sword arms. Their speed and skills are superior to almost any other sword fighter. And as expected, like they mentioned, speed and skill are very high on these guys' list. They uh, are typically very high in that. Uh, some Myrmidon are high in strength, others are a little bit lower. Aside from that, all their stats are about average. Their defense may be a little bit low, but because they've got high speed, they've also typically got very high dodging. Okay, sorry about that random cut. I remember that I actually did have to go pull up the stats so I could see the growth rates because I didn't remember all of them. So, her growth rates are HP is 50%, strength is 40%, magic is 30%, skill is 45%, speed is 60%, luck is 45%, defense, uh, defense. Luck is 45%, defense is 20%, and resistance is 45%. So as you can see, she's pretty high in speed and skill, like I mentioned, which is the case with most Myrmidon. Her HP is a little bit low, like I said, the dodging stat kind of solves that problem, but if you want to use the Seraph Rub on her, you could. Uh, she's got pretty high resistance naturally, so she'll generally be able to do very well against the mage unit, should she actually get hit. So she is actually a very good unit. Uh, really the issue, in addition to low HP, is sometimes her strength is a little bit low. I mean, sometimes you get lucky with it, sometimes you don't. So if you don't, you'll probably either have to forge a better weapon for her, or you'll have to, like, add, um, you know, some kind of stat-boosting item to increase their strength, which is an item I don't remember the name of. Uh, we'll run into them, though, later. Don't be fooled right now about how low her attack is, because keep in mind, she's only got an iron sword and a slim sword, and the slim swords are actually weaker than the iron weapons. I believe they're one of the few weapons that are weaker than iron. They do have a slight crit rate on them, and their hit is technically higher than an iron sword, but their attack is goes from 5 to 3, so it's almost half of what it was from the iron sword, so don't be fooled by the fact that that's the case. She can uh, use DE level weapons right now, so she can actually use a steel sword if you have one and you'd like to trade it over. I'm not going to worry about that, however. She also has the skill called Vantage. This will allow her to attack first in all fights, and that does mean all fights. If you remember a second ago, this soldier actually ran into her and then like a little reddish-orange light enveloped her and she attacked first. This guy actually did initiate combat. That was Vantage that activated it. And it, when it says all fights, it means all fights. In the sequel of this game, Radiant Dawn, it did not activate every single time, but in Path of Radiance, it will activate every time. So it is a very, very good skill to have, definitely. Uh, she's a fire attribute if you care about the supports, but I really don't, so that sums that. And let's go kill this guy. Now I recommend when you're going through the top section here with Ike and Mia, because these are the only two that went north, and they're going to go back over to the left here in a second. When it comes to the second turn, I'm going to go ahead and turn her animations off. I would recommend highly getting rid of the lance users first, because the axe user, hand axes have low accuracy anyway, they're going to have the weapon triangle disadvantage when fighting Ike and Mia, so they're probably not going to get the kill that they need. Uh, steel sword is enough? No, that's iron. Steel sword's enough? I guess it is. So don't bother with the lance users just yet, or the axe user, go ahead and take out the lance users. Uh, one of them will drop the key, so either Ike or Mia will get it. I'm going to probably trade it over to Mia because I know what's in this chest and it's a weapon, not a item or anything like that. Uh, as for down here, let's go knock this guy out. Oh, no need depth right there, but sure, why not? That was actually a crit right there. 
you can't really tell whenever mages get a crit because it doesn't have like the little blue sparks, but you can hear it. I talked over it, but I heard the tail end of it, so. Uh, as for over here, I'm gonna move Oscar and Boy forward. Boy got hurt a little bit, so let's go ahead and heal him. This stage has an invisible line, and Ike and me are gonna be the ones to cross that invisible line probably next turn. But crossing that invisible line, a lot of reinforcements are going to show up. In particular, the space that's below Soren and also the one to the right of that. There actually are going to be two reinforcements. One is a mage and the other, I believe, is just a soldier. So, fair warning that they will show up. That's pretty much the only reinforcement set that will, you know, possibly mess you up. That might hit Reese or Soren. So, just be aware that they will show up. And that's what I was waiting for, was that thief down there. Yeah, see what I mean? This is why I wasn't worried about this guy if he tried to attack Mia. He would have only done one damage and his hit percentage is 17%, so he probably would not have gotten it. But first, I am going to trade over that key. And then I'm going to attack him. I'm going to go ahead and use the Slim Sword because I don't want to, quote-unquote, waste the Iron Sword. She's not going to be able to kill him anyway. Ike will take care of him. Yeah, he couldn't do any damage against Ike. Very nice. So that means he was only had like what? Yeah, he only had an offense of eight, so pretty low. Uh, with these guys, Oscar should be able to get rid of one of these guys with the steel lance. Yes, very nice. At this point, hopefully, your units that use either swords, axes, or lances can wield the steel weapons and use get two hits, like you know, the times two hit. Uh, I'm not sure about Boy, whenever I used him, he actually did not have it at this point, but he might. He did with the Iron, uh, we're gonna use this wind spell. He did with the Iron weapons then, though. If they don't yet, that means they probably haven't gotten enough points and speed, but if they do, that's awesome, because that's very, very useful. Okay, so wind broke and Soren can't use anything right now. A mage is gonna show up over here with the fire spell. First, I'm gonna get rid of this thief, though. Aw, oh, man, come on. Really? At least hit him this time. There we go. Okay, I'll get him next turn. Thieves are basically, well, I mean, you'll see them later, but they'll, they're basically designed to, as an enemy, show up on the map, and they'll pretty much ignore you as a player most of the time, and they're just going to grab the chest and then leave the map. That's what they're going to try to do. So try to get rid of this guy as fast as you can. They can also actually steal from your players if their speed is higher than yours. So this guy's a speed of 10, and Tanya has a speed of 14, so he couldn't steal from her, but Soren only has, uh, not Soren, but like Reese has a speed of 5. He could steal something from Reese if he wanted to. He'd probably take the speed wing, so that's another reason you'd want to get rid of them very quickly. Uh, he wouldn't be able to get Oscar. So send one of your Cavaliers to go get rid of that guy. The iron units, it's kind of up to you. The reason I sent Tanya is because she's got the hammer weapon, so if she gets in a tight spot, she can just kill them with a bonus damage from that, so either one works. Uh, I'm not going to do anything with Reese or Boyd unless one of these two need healing. Uh, I don't think either one of these guys can reach. No, they cannot. Okay, we're going to do this then. It is nice that they give you a fire spell here, though, because like it's it's very in all likeliness, if you're using Soren, it will probably either break in a fight, or it's probably down to a single digit of how much uses it has left on it. It's likely very low. That's still pretty good. That's for an Iron Axe? That's pretty decent at this point. Like I said, pre-promotes aren't worth it, but I mean, the Knights are kind of a pain in the butt to get rid of right now without using Ike's Regal Sword, like the boss that we had in uh, the scouting mission, so... If you want to go now and kill them with Oscar, you're more than welcome to, though. Yeah, we crossed over that invisible line, so this is going to happen. It, it's kind of in a weird spot, too. There are more of in this stage. I forgot about those two. So, this is General Patrine. She is one of the four riders of Dane, as they're going to mention here in a second. Uh, we'll be fighting all of them in this game, but it will not be too much later. She's the weakest of the four. She also uses a Flame Lance, which is a ranged lance weapon that's based on your magic power rather than your strength power. It's a very bizarre weapon. She's got pretty decent speed, but we'll get into her later. She's not very difficult. So, she wonders where the princess is. Ike says, yeah, sorry to tell you this, she's in Galia. And then Grail shows up. Because he can. Oh no, it's a solitary soldier. And he's dead. 
if I remember correctly, uh, I don't think he Grail would have needed a critical hit to get rid of that guy. But it was still pretty cool. So basically, Ike's an idiot. They, they probably would have been fine had we not done anything. Gotcha's got high defense, Shinon, like, rarely ever gets hit. And, I mean, Grail's obviously the leader, so you would assume he's very strong as well. So, anyway. So you get to hear about the twisted games that King Ashgar has. Basically, it's like a Coliseum fight. He'll gather strong men and have them fight each other. The people that live are given influential positions regardless of their birth, which is one of the few good things. I think they mentioned it later on that's actually good about King Ashgar is he cares more about actual strength rather than, you know, your position that you're born into. So, that, that's actually one of the few good things that people actually say about Ashgar as opposed to the other continents. And so at this point, Grail challenges Patrine to a one-on-one -on -one fight. She says, I'm not going to fall for that, and then she promptly falls for it. And Ike goes back to his spot on the map. You don't have to worry about that. Wherever he was, he'll, he'll go back there. So we try to push it in and we get out of here. Come on, don't fall behind. And there's your reinforcements. At this point, let's go ahead and start here. First and foremost, I'm going to pick this up. This chest contains an Armor Slayer. No, the commentary was not off, I knew it was an Armor Slayer. I would recommend keeping this on Mia for now. It's obviously a sword, and it's going to be stronger than either of the ones she has right now. That is effective against the armored units, like these guys right here, so very good against them. Ike's got the Regal Sword, so we're probably going to stick that on him. Uh, there we go. As for you guys down here, this is not the guy with the fire spell that will give it to you. It's not this one. It's actually this guy right here. He'll drop it, so... Uh, let's see. Sword actually does not have a spell, that's right. So, what we're gonna have to do is try to kill one of these guys. Which we cannot do. Well, that presents a problem. Uh... Alright, here's the plan. What we're gonna do first is get rid of this guy. Which should have happened last round, but since I missed, it didn't happen. Stupid thieves. They're pretty good about giving you decent experience, though, if that's any consolation. Then we're gonna move her right here. I'm more concerned about the soldier than the mage, because if the mage goes after Reese, no big loss. Good, he didn't miss either. We're gonna stick with him right there. Boyd, you can go ahead and have attack this guy. If he misses, then he misses and I'll just heal him. If he hits, then I don't have to worry about him. Sweet. This is not typically what I do in this part, but since Soren didn't have a spell, because it broke prematurely, unfortunately. Not prematurely as in broke before the uses ran out, but broke before I would have liked it to break. So these guys will come over here and attack, but we got it walled off pretty well with Oscar and Titania, so I'm not too worried about either of these, any of these three characters. They should be perfectly fine. Ike and me have got their thing over here. Shinnon and Gaetri are pretty much just, with the exception of these two guys, gonna handle everybody that's on this side right here. So what I'd recommend doing is taking out the archer, first and foremost, this guy right here. Gaetri will not be able to double this guy, more than likely, unless you level them up a lot in the previous level with a pirate ship. And then after you do that, go ahead and take Gaetri and shove him right here. So at worst, he's only gonna get attacked by one unit, because this soldier, I believe, will not move to attack him, so... Uh, he'll move down, but he won't move up. It's rather odd. I don't know why that's the case, but he won't, so. Sword can't do anything right now because he has no weapon. So now we just kind of let it play out. And we'll be sure to kill that guy next round and switch over the spell to Soren so we can actually start fighting again. Whoever now might get him. Yeah. They got high enough speed where they can probably get him. They might still miss, though. And anything that comes into contact with Gotri is probably not going to do any damage to him, if it hits at all. Alright, that takes care of that guy. I don't know how much damage that would have done, so... I know it multiplies the damage by 3. It could have been 9, though. It could have been 10. Who knows. It had to be at least 9, though. So, I mean, it was relatively strong. 
That's one less person I have to worry about, though. This guy's about dead, so Oscar might get this one. Yep, sure enough. Nice, get another level. Hopefully it's something good. Get some HP, strength, skill, and death. Not even close. HP and luck. The most useless stat in the entire game. Alright. Luck has a few purposes in it. it. If you actually read the description, it says it has multiple uses. I mentioned it in the first episode. Really, the only thing that it's super important for is preventing enemies from getting criticals on you, but generally the enemy's luck stat is so low that will almost never happen anyway unless they have a killing weapon. Because later on you'll find out that there are weapons that are called, like, uh, Killing Sword, Killer Axe, things like that. Anything with the word killer or killing in the title has a very high critical rate on it, so that's what that means. Uh, Mia can reach him, and he's got four health left. I'm gonna go ahead and see if he can. This guy's a javelin, doesn't he? No, he does not, actually. He has a Steel Lance. Mia yeah, should be able to take this guy out. Yes, perfect. Technically, that's risky, but if it's 100% accuracy, there's no way it's going to miss, then no need to worry about it. Even if he had attacked her, she would have had vantage, so she probably would have been okay. Alright, now, let's see. You guys all have a bunch of weapons, so... I'm going to trade this over. So Tanya can get rid of this guy. This is really the only chance she's going to get to shine, too, because, you know, it's kind of a weird map and you have to have as many units fighting as you can. There's the fire spell for Soren, so now he can actually start doing stuff again. Uh, Iron Lance can take him out? Yes, I can. That's sweet. Alright, that takes care of that. And with that, taken care of down at the bottom. That's pretty much the worst of it. These guys are going to be alright. We're going to take out the Myrmidon first. And with him gone, we can just move Gotri right in front of where Shinnan is, and he can just wall off and hang out there. So we're pretty much set at this point. That's really the hardest part is the first half of this. Once you get to the second half, it's pretty much a cakewalk from there. Okay, that should be the enemy's turn. They're not going to do much other than attack these two guys. I don't think there's anybody that's close enough to get anyone else. Unless that soldier with a key comes down and goes after Ike. And if he does, he does. Wow, he actually got a double on that guy? Holy cow. Maybe his buy rhythm was high? I'm, I'm not sure. It's pretty uncommon for him to get that on a Myrmidon. On a soldier, I would believe, because their speeds are lower, but... Whatever. It's a battle of the knights. It's the slowest thing you'll ever see. Unless that happens, then it will be somewhat fast. It might seem like a waste of experience if you don't use Godtree, but, I mean, it honestly is easy that way. You could try to have them regroup up early if you wanted to, but it's easier to do it this way, and this is generally what I do, so. And Godtree will play a vital role in a later stage, which I'll talk about that when we actually get there. So it might be nice to let him have at least a few levels, just in case. Ooh, that was really good. Everything but magic and luck, which neither of those matter too much to him, so... Ah, uh, Ike's got slot for a chest key. Can we get rid of him? I think not. So I'm gonna do this first, and if he gets a crit, well, then he gets the chest key, and he did not, so Ike will get the chest key. Awesome. Get out of here, jerk. Alright, very nice. Okay, so that just leaves, yeah, the group at the top here. Uh, healer, knight, and the actual boss himself. Cool. Okay, everybody down here is pretty good on health. With the exception of Mia. Actually, I should probably Mia first. So she's got less HP and less defense. While I do like Myrmidon, you do have to be careful. If their health gets low, do not be afraid to heal them, because they will definitely appreciate it. Those virtual characters and their wacky world. And Tanya's pretty much done at this point in the stage. I'm not going to use her for anything else, really. Okay, move me over here so we can use that other chest key. 
Hey buddy, how's it going? What mission are you harmed? Do I look injured? I'm fit as ever. You must be disappointed Dane hasn't stuck me full holes yet. <laughs> he just has no comment. Guess it's time to tighten our belts and move on. Now that I'm going to be dragging your worthless cargo around again, I'll have to work twice as hard. Jeez. Whatever, dude. Uh, I'm not sure which one of these has which, so I'm going to hold off because one of these is a quote-unquote weapon. It's actually a staff. And then the other one is a skill, which will show up in your item slots. So I want to make sure that that does not happen. In the meantime, I'll move everybody else forward. Probably not be doing anything else with Boyd either, to be perfectly honest. Uh, at least, how are we on slots? I think pretty much full right now. I think we won't worry about it then. Yeah, I know, I'm, I'm screwing around with that. Uh, we'll just go ahead and end the turn. Mia's got slots for both parts, yeah, so I should let her open up one of these first. And hopefully this is the staff? It is, that this is the ward staff. Uh, obviously this is up for Reese's use, it's a C-level staff. It will strengthen the unit's magic resistance for a short while. Whoever you use it on, it will increase their resistance by 7, and then it will drop down 1 point every turn after that until it returns back to normal. So, if that's the case, then the skill is put here, so I'll have Mia get that as well. Uh, we might be able to get this guy. Uh, Reese is right there, yeah, we'll go ahead and do it. If we get to depth, that guy's gone, so... Yes, awesome. The boss here does not move, the knight, I believe, guarding him does not move either, and I know the healer doesn't move, so... Good chance for a level for Soren right there. Nice, very nice, I like seeing the points in defense, it's pretty uncommon for him. Alright, let's go ahead and heal. Okay, now at this point, we're pretty much just gonna group everybody together. gonna grab the final thing which is the skill miracle this is a skill you can equip later when you get the supply convoy starting in the next chapter it will reduce any lethal blow to half damage so it's actually quite nice for your more frail units so now that that's taken care of uh, let's get rid of this healer first and foremost what are you doing Oscar just go straight forward get rid of healer awesome that works Get a level out of that. Yes! A point in strength and a point in defense. It's about time, man. Okay, now it's just unnecessary healing for the time being. Uh, how are you two doing? You got beat up a little bit? Okay. Now, at this point, because this is the last time that you're going to be using Shinnan or Gotri, they're actually going to leave the Grail Mercenaries, which you'll see after the cutscene why they did that. But, uh, at this point, you want to remove all the gear that you possibly can from them. In Gotri's case, the Night Band, you're not going to get... Well, no, you will get another Knight if you want to use them, so... Um, anything that you dub valuable, if you want to trade out vulnerabilities like this, just anything that you can possibly take from them, go ahead and do so. Uh, let's go ahead and this because you will get an archer as well so I'm gonna take the steel bow and all this stuff off them if you can't fit everything just decide what's important what's gonna break soon you know things like that so you got two lances left we're gonna have room for that but he does have room for an item for me yes he does trade over the steel lance I think everybody else is out of slots, so... No, I just got one left, so... We're gonna have one weapon that will get left behind, which will be either this Iron Lance or the Iron Bow. Probably the Iron Lance, because it's got less use on it, and the bow would actually be a little bit more helpful. Uh, so we're gonna trade that over. No, not to him. He can't hold it, dude. There we go. So yeah, take all that stuff off if you want to, um, because... Uh, whenever they rejoin, because they will rejoin, it will not be, uh, they'll actually, you know, still have items for whatever chapter you find them in, so it's not going to be a huge loss. Uh, unless Oscar's Iron Lance has less uses, which it does not. 
That one's actually got nine. Let's. I know it's a small difference, but let's trade it over. You never know. Besides, the boy's not gonna be attacking this turn anyway. He has got ward, right? Okay, yeah, so we switch this out with something else for Rees. And now it pretty much just depends on whoever you want to get the kill. Just use the ward staff on them and go for it. Uh, let's see, Oscar's at 11. Ike's at 14, Mia's at 6, and Soren is at 9. So I'm going to actually use it for Mia. She shit. Because if I actually went up and just, like, attacked him outright right here, 11 times 2, well, he's actually going to be able to double. But I'll go ahead and show you the example of why it's useful. Plus, you can use this at any time. Your units don't have to be injured, so it's a, also very good for using uh, repetitively for extra experience on your healer if need be. But now, instead of 9 times 2, it's only going to do 4 times 2, so it's actually quite a substantial change. Uh, does this guy have any skills? He does not. Okay. So at this point, 4 times 2, he would do... Well, on this turn, he'd do 8, and then he would do another 8, so he would do 16, leave her at 5. She would do, what, 18, leave him at 9, so yeah, she'd actually be able to get rid of him. Balmer? What kind of name is Balmer? Was his first name Lip? For Lip Balmer? I don't know. Just Balmer, whatever. It's not a randomly generated name, that's actually his name. I accidentally messed up with the C-Stick right here. If you move the C-Stick around, you can, like, screw up the camera angles. L, you can zoom it in and out. I never show this stuff, but I figure the camera's fine as it is when we start the game, so that's usually why I'm not messing with it. Okay, it's going to do a little bit more damage this time, because the ward's going to be weaker. Well, no, he's going to do the same amount of damage. I am going to heal Mia just in case. I don't think she can miss, but just in case. That's a level for her, very nice. That was a pretty good level. I would have liked speed, but she can usually cap it. She's got 13 levels, well, 14 levels to get 7 speed. She can usually do that if her growth is 60%. She will usually cap it, so you'll probably be fine. Go and heal just in case. But this should be the killing blow right here. So, once again, just in case you didn't hear beforehand, if there's anything that you want to use from Shin or Gautry, because you will get another knight and another archer after they leave, take it off of their abilities. You can't take off his provoke skill, but aside from that, you can take anything else that you want for their weapons or their objects. So, I left Gautry with an Iron Lance because I pretty much had to, but aside from that, I took everything that I possibly could. So... With that being said, let's go ahead and finish this guy off with, uh, yeah, we'll use the Slim Sword because I don't want to waste the Armor Slayer, so we'll use the Slim Sword on him. And now I am aware that it's, it's probably on the video still going to have a lot more time. That's because there's a lot more cutscenes and stuff after this. This is a very cutscene intensive chapter for whatever reason. It's important stuff though. If you're actually following the story, this is one of the most important chapters of the game. A mage ban. That's actually going to be important because Sora needs that. And the chest key is not the end of the world if you lose that because you're going to get a thief whenever you start finding chests and you can just take him into the map instead. So I'm going to drop the chest key. I usually end up selling those anyway if I do take them back to the convoy. So... about 7 o'clock in the morning, I gotta get up, or well, I don't have to get up, I am up, but I gotta go mow the lawn, which is gonna suck. That's, that's the one thing that I do not like about my dad's weird midlife crisis thing, he's just become, like, very, very picky about how the lawn is, and so it gets mowed, instead of, like, twice a week like he used to, it gets mowed every other day, and since he's been on vacation for a couple days, it's a 10-day vacation, so I've had to mow the lawn every other day. Or in my case, it's like every three days, which is still three times and it's still a pain. The bugs destroyed me last time I went out there, even with bug spray. Got bumps all over my arm. Kill them all as she throws the lance and it doesn't do anything. Oh, come on, we can take them. Just, we'll just huddle up in a corner. We'll put Titania and Godfrey in the front, along with Grail. Maybe Oscar and everybody else can just hold out. And as long as we got enough weapons, because we took them all from Godfrey and Shen, we should be perfectly... Okay, yeah, never mind. I'm just saying, like, in theory, you probably could, with the exception of Betrine, you probably could win this fight. 
it, it would be hard, but it would be doable. Stand your ground, all of you. Don't panic. I'll personally slaughter the first man to turn his back on the enemy. Well, there's a lot of men turning their back on the enemy right here. And then most of them run away. And they run back in, somehow have lost all their weapons. Only to find Galleon soldiers. If I comply immediately, you will face Galleon's full strength. And then it's this guy! We'll see him in a minute. This is the Black Knight, he's another one of the four riders. And the Black Knight is much stronger than Petrinus. He's easily the strongest of the four. He's not the last one you fight, but he is easily the strongest of the four. Yes, he's creepily staring at us. Are you planning on taking us on all by yourself? Actually, he could, and he would win. Quite easily, I might add. Like, he would easily slaughter us. If you've played the game before, you probably recognize that guy. So it turns out that Rolf, Miss, and uh, Alencia actually went to Gali and requested aid for the mercenary company, and so that's why Red Newell's this guy and the rest of the army showed up here. And so Ike gets a lesson in culture, because remember, the only time he's actually heard them is referred to as subhuman rather than Lagoos, because the only person he's talked to about it would be Shinnan, who hates them. This is like the girl mercenaries. Grail's off in his own little world, they'll explain it in a second, that's why he's not talking. But this is Ranul, who is one of the warriors of Gala, or Galia. If they've laid claim, claim to Crimea, that means that Lord Renning is also defeated at this point. And they also uh, had warriors near Gallia's border now, for obvious reasons, because since, in a way, Gallia and Crimea were aligned, which they'll explain, I believe, after this next chapter, that means it would be entirely possible for them, after defeating Crimea, to just keep going right on into Gallia, so... At this point, they're going to have to hang out in the castle and wait a little while because they don't have enough extra rooms for guests. So they're going to take Alencia to King, the king himself, Canigus, and uh, we'll be joining up with her later on. But she is in safe hands. They're not actually messing with you at this point. She is in good hands. So yes, Grey was not paying attention at all. So in short, Alencia is going on to the palace with Ranulf. We're going into Galia and setting up camp in an old castle. So, Gabal Castle, which is not important at all, but... And we'll have food delivered later. Salted meat and hard biscuits. Mmm, hard biscuits. Nothing like eating a rock. So, we'll meet up with Valencia later. For now, looks like we're headed out to a castle to see what we can see. And now it's nighttime, and Grail's... Wait, what? Why did he walk to the right just then? That was weird. Whatever. Now, this upcoming cutscene, I'm not going to talk through the little dialogue here. This upcoming cutscene is super, super quiet. So I'm going to turn up the volume quite a bit on it. I'm not going to talk through it. But I will also have subtitles because it's very, very, very hard to hear for some reason. And all the cutscenes are like that, really. But this one in particular is really bad. The reason why is because it's kind of from Ike's point of view, and since he's standing far away from what's going on, he can't hear very well, but it would be very important to the story for you guys to actually know what they're saying. So, I will be turning up the volume slightly on it, so don't freak out if the volume gets super loud. It, my commentary will not be there, it's just going to be the audio for the game. Just fair warning about that. I'll let you know when it's about to start. You'll probably figure out when it's about to start, though. So Grail asks Ike how he's getting used to mercenary combats. Ike wonders why he put him in charge. Reason being is because, as one would assume, whenever Grail passes, the successor to the mercenary company would be Ike. So it makes sense. Ike's just kind of an idiot. And then he asks, do you remember anything about your mother? He's like, where did that come from? He's totally reminiscing and barely paying any attention whatsoever. So, she was kind, I think. Don't really remember, and you've never said too much about her either. So they walk a little bit more. 
I like how Grail still looks like he's in a fighting stance and Ike doesn't at all. He looks really relaxed. So at this point, he's like, yeah, leave and go back to the castle. Return to the castle immediately. Ike's just like, oh, okay. It's very weird, but it will make sense shortly. He kind of stops halfway, turns around, just keeps going. Then Grail walks off in the other direction. And here comes the cutscene, so I will put down my controller and I will be quiet for this cutscene. So, enjoy. Father, what's going on? Where are you? Like I said, important cutscene, so that's why I had the dialogue on screen right there. So, it turns out the Black Knight kinda just stabbed Grail through the stomach, and despite the fact he did not bleed whatsoever, because, you know, they couldn't put that in even though the game's already rated T for Team. He asks if he, the Black Knight asks if he will get what he came for, and Grail says he didn't have it, he threw it away. You know better than anyone what it truly is, and you threw it away? Surely you can craft a more plausible lie, you're not even trying anymore. So the Black Knight is clearly looking for something. And so he threatens to kill his line, i.e. Ike and Mist. And uh, Ike's, Ike's a little TO'd right now, because you know he just watched his father get killed, so uh, he's not exactly happy right now. So, he tries to challenge the Black Knight, and of course, if Grail can't beat him, I sincerely doubt Ike could. In fact, he doesn't even attack Ike, he just uses the shove command, and then Ike falls over. Uh, that should tell you how strong he actually is. Give me what I'm after, if you offer no resistance, I will leave your child alive. So Ike tries again, he misses again, and this time, instead of being struck down, King of Beasts, that's right. Uh, they'll mention it later on, I think either at the start of the next chapter or in this one, that uh, King Kanagis is actually on the forest and he just let out a roar right then, so he's letting the Black Knight know that he would come in to protect Ike if need be. 
the son as stupid as the father? No, he's even more stupid, actually. Yeah, there- Dude, I- No, seriously, he's not lying. There's no way you can win currently. Even if you're at level 20, nothing's gonna happen. I have actually tested this theory on easy and used only Ike for all the maps. No, he cannot do anything. So at this point, the Black Knight leaves. Apparently still not getting whatever he asked for, and Ike still in one piece. We have to get Grail back to the castle. Yes, he actually is still alive, believe it or not. He did not just, like, die on sight. Which, though it's a very small touch, I like the fact that he didn't just die immediately. Because, you know, if you actually know anything about how getting stabbed through the stomach works, while it will kill you, it's not just immediate death. It's not like taking a bullet to the head. It's not like you're just immediately going to die. You will still be alive for a little while. But at some point, of course, naturally, if it's not taken care of, you would bleed out and whatnot, hemorrhaging and all that good stuff. So at this point, Grail's last words, because he is going to pass away, here says, Forget about revenge and leave that night alone. Stay away. Stay with the King of Galia and live here in peace. Need you to take care of everything. The company missed. I do like that picture. I mean, it looks nice, is what I mean. Wait, what was Titania doing? She wasn't even in the castle. Oh, that was weird. And so at this point, unfortunately, Grail does pass away. Lost a good man out there. There's your bonus experience, how many turns it took to clear. And so at this point, with Grail officially dead, because he is dead, no, he is not coming back to life at any point. He is gone. Like in real Fire Emblem, once the unit's dead, they're dead for good. The real Fire Emblem, not the new... Not the new, uh classic, or not even classic, not the new casual playthrough that you'll see in Awakening and what have you. So, with Grill dead slain by the hands of the Black Knight, what will we do now? We've got the Galia's recruits coming to, to escort us to the actual capital, but what's the plan after that with Grail dead? Well, you'll just have to find out next time on Let's Play Fire Emblem Path the Radiance. Thank you guys for watching. Once again, I am very sorry about the whole issue with the game, like not being read and what have you, which is why I'm going to go ahead and save right now and turn this off. But thank you for watching. It won't be a problem once the convoy shows up because that'll put everybody's levels at, you know, probably about 13 or so. Either way, enough of the outro. I will see you guys next time. Later.